All right, man, Torture Talk. Like, share, subscribe to the page. Hit the thumbs up button if you like the content. So today, 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 today. Let me get this camera around, man. Yeah, there we go. There we go. There we go. So today, we're going to be talking about Diddy and someone has came out. One of the uh, witnesses or whatever we want to call him, he came out and he basically gave the authorities some flash drives of some of the nefarious things that Diddy was allegedly doing on camera, him and a couple of other celebrities. So we're going to listen to what this man has to say. And he's being interviewed by a news anchor. And um, yeah, we're going to listen to what he got to say. All right, before I get into that, you know, I got to get the legendary spell. This is Torture Talk. Like, share, subscribe to the page. If you're new here, let me work for your, descript your subscription today. All the single ladies put one in the chat. All the fellas, y'all know where to find the ones at. Just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, links on the screen, catch at PayPal's in the description. Let me know where you're from, too. They called me the Hidden Gem. I went from 1,300 subscribers to over 12,000 subscribers. I'm about to be 12,001. Can you believe that? In a million by Monday morning. Can you believe that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll wake up one day and it's like, damn. So let me know where you're from, too. And, uh, yeah, I got some other things coming up, too, man. Some uh, other uh, episodes coming up. They're just going to be probably dropping sporadically because, uh, my time's a little bit off because every time I upload something, it takes so long and I got to just let it come out when it comes out until I get back to the studio because uh, where I'm at, the service is kind of like janky. So just excuse me, but you'll see episodes coming out, you know, and um, probably ain't going to have no episodes maybe this weekend, but I don't know. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. All right. So look, we're going to get into it. I know that was a long spill, but. Sometimes it has to be done. All right, so let's get it, man. Let's go. Because my next guest just testified before a federal grand jury. He says he was in possession of a trove of digital evidence from Diddy's freak-offs and parties. His name is Courtney Burgess, and he says a friend gave him 11 flash drives that belonged to the late Kim Porter, and if you follow this story, you'll know that Kim Porter is Diddy's ex-girlfriend and the mother of four of his kids. Okay, so he testified in front of a federal grand jury. Um, I want to go look up the transcripts if I can find it to see what he had to say and see what was said. I think that that's public record. I'm not sure, but I want to look that up. Um, also, too... Um, I don't know how Kim Porter passed away. Um, some people saying something happened to her. I don't know, but I need to go look that up as well. But uh, it's not about her. This is about the guy. So let's go. On those drives, the witness says eight videos featured eight celebrities at Diddy freak offs or parties and that six were males, two were females. The drive also included a manuscript of an alleged Kim Porter memoir, a memoir that her four kids insist is fake. Courtney Burgess told his story on a podcast before he told the grand jury today, and after he told the grand jury, and I mean immediately after, he booked it over to my set, and he and his attorney talked to me. I should tell you that he was very limited in how much detail he could go into uh, about his testimony, and because... The eight people in the videos, the eight celebrities in the videos, were allegedly victims of sex crimes. We know who they are, but we will not be naming them, famous or not. Here now. Okay, so I need to understand something. What is this news network? Because I question everything. And sometimes these people can sit in front of a green screen and put a chyron right in front of them and says news and we believe it so it says it says news nation all right so news nation i believe that is a real news network so i believe that's a real news network i couldn't see it from here so i had to look at it to make sure but you got to question everything when it comes to these things that was my conversation with courtney burgess and ariel 
Mitchell, who's his attorney, beginning with the question of whether the participants in the video even knew they were being recorded. Were there any cameras in places where you'd assume privacy, like bathrooms? It, well, I've never been in this house, but the picture, yes, yes. That's what took place, you, yeah. You, you You're aware of Zoom privacy, like bathrooms? It, well, I've never been in this house, but the picture, yes, yes. That's what took place, you, yeah. You, you're aware, you're aware of, of uh, surreptitious uh, cameras that were recording well, in private places like bathrooms? I didn't see the cameras. You could tell how was, the person was angled. Not, I knew that it was a camera there because I was there, you know, I was there. I don't know if the person was too tall, he was holding it or whatever, but I wasn't there. May I ask you this, Courtney, and um, Ariel, you can jump in on this as well, but I want to hear from Courtney first. Your uh, home was raided. Okay, so he said that he don't know because he was never in Diddy's house. And she asked, the question she asked was, was there any cameras in private areas? So like bathrooms, well, it actually would just be the bathroom. And you know what I'm saying? Was there any cameras in there? Um, and he said he would assume that by the way they was positioned. So I kind of find that hard to believe that these freak off things would be happening in a private area. So unless the bathroom was super big and it fit a lot of people in there. So I don't know if he's saying, I don't know because see the reason why I question everything is because I know a lot of these people, they want to get paid. You know what I'm saying? And this is not to excuse Diddy of anything. Cause again, I have to constantly tell y'all this. Diddy is what Diddy is. He is, and he's in, uh, He's a he's a predator. You know what I'm saying? That's what he does. I'm saying you have to question these things because I think a lot of people look at everything from one side. They don't look at the, the, the whole picture. So the whole picture would be there's a lot of bad people on that picture. You can't just blame one person. Now, was these people being recorded and no one knew that they were being recorded? That's another story. You know what I'm saying? Then I could come back and say, okay, well, yeah, y'all was right about that. But in this case, he's saying that from what he's seeing, the angle he's seeing it from, they could have been, they could have been being recorded without their knowledge. That's what he's saying. And um, we're going to get into it a little more. Let's go. By federal authorities. And I assume it is because of, of this material. Is that true? Um, I wouldn't say that. They just we went to every one of them looking for me. They said, um, the paperwork said the 24th that I had to be there the 28th, and then it was um, the 27th. I said, I can't make it there. That's tomorrow. So I don't know. From the look of it, it was four days. Uh, and I want to be specific. Ariel? Yes, when we talk about yeah. a raid, um, we're talking about when a subpoena is served for documents a search warrant or an arrest warrant. In this situation, Mr. Uh, Burgess was not in any way, shape, or form uh, had a search warrant or an arrest warrant issued for him. It was just them serving a subpoena. So when the federal government needs to serve a subpoena, they use the marshal service to come to all of your residences if you have more than one residence. So in this situation, they sent marshals to all of mr burgess's residences and okay so i don't know i think a lot of i think a lot of lawyers be using tricky they be using a lot of tricky words saying that he wasn't uh it wasn't what's the name it was a subpoena um basically they're saying that you had you were subpoenaed to come to court but what for what reason though you know what i'm saying now was this because you handed the stuff over to the authorities beforehand or they found out that you knew that they that you had these things and you never told them maybe they're going to explain i don't know but i do know that if you are subpoenaed um to come to court 
it's probably most likely uh, because they think you were kind of you were going to not come. And what she just said was very important. What he said was very important because he said that they told him to come on one day and he said he couldn't come that day. So he come the next day. Uh, he couldn't come the next day because it was too soon. Then they subpoenaed him. That can that can be taken as if he was trying to not go, even though he went. I'm just saying. So y'all got to pay attention to some of these things that they be saying. So let's keep it going. That was somehow construed or understood or turned into a, a raid, but he did not face a raid. It was just to serve him a subpoena. Ariel, do you believe that the uh, subpoenas were issued and executed based on uh, the federal authorities' knowledge um, that these flash drives existed and, and had this kind of compromising material? I think... That's my question, too. And I just asked that. Why would they subpoena you? Did they did they know that these flash drives existed? And who told them this? Because if you're the only one with the flash drives, how would somebody else know you have them? It had to be somebody else. So, how, so maybe she's going to explain. I need to hear this. It was based on statements that Mr. Burgess made in a prior interview. Flash drives existed and, and had this kind of compromising material? I think it was based on statements that Mr. Burgess made in a prior interview. Oh, so you had an interview before this. And you and and the way the way this news anchor made it seem like this was the first time he was telling this story. So you had an interview before this. And in the interview, you said that you had the flash drives. And this is the reason why they subpoenaed you. This is the reason why they came after you and they told you you had to come to court or come to, to, come, uh, to come to talk in front of the grand jury. The federal grand jury. And those statements include descriptions of what the witness says he saw on those tapes. So I asked him about that and he answered what he could given the limitations imposed on him after testifying before the grand jury. Out of those eight videos, eight celebrities, six men and two women, how many of those eight celebrities um, were, were close to being underage or potentially two. underage? Two males. Two males. And okay, so he said, she asked him, out of eight celebrities, how many of those was close to being underage now? Are you talking about the celebrities being underage or are you talking about the people that they were dealing with were underage? Now, I need they to, I need them to clarify that. I know she said out of all the eight celebrities, how many was underage? You know what I'm saying? But I need to clarify that. You know what I'm saying? And on top of that, was these people with Diddy or were they with someone else? Maybe they're going to explain. So let's see. Of those eight celebrities, how many of them were intoxicated um, or under the influence of drugs? Uh, 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 this is going to be all speculation. I just want to preface it by he wouldn't know if appear they to be. were. Right. Sure. Appear to Let be. me rephrase right. it. Based on, yes. Understand. Out of the eight celebrities um, who were recorded having intimate relations with Sean Combs, how many of them appear to be? Okay, so now that answers my question. So basically, he's saying that there were three underage uh, uh, children or whatever with Sean Combs. And on top of that, on top of that, they're saying that they appeared to be intoxicated or drugged either inebriated or intoxicated or into the influence all of, of them all of them out of those eight how many appear to be potentially victimized how many might have been victimizing i think um all to be honest all were i don't think he understood the question and here's where i start to throw the red flags in there 
because he's so quick to answer the questions and he not answering it. So she basically asked him out of all of those people who were inebriated or intoxicated, how many of them look like they were kind of willingly doing it or, or cool horse or any type of way. And what he said was all of them, all of them like real quick. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm tripping. Let me, let me run that back a little bit. See what he said. Were victims. How many might have been victimizing? I think, um, all to be honest you see so he's saying in one argument or one saying he's saying that <laughs> maybe he didn't understand the, the question and the wording but he's saying in one place that diddy was taking advantage of these people and then she's saying on the other hand well who was the one doing the victimizing uh, how many of them in it and out of the celebrities were doing it and he said all of them so it can't be both it has to be one or the other you know what i'm saying Oh. Were were victims they or victims. were perpetrating? Victims. They were okay. all eight were victimized. Yeah. Meaning, Victim. this was happening to them, and they were inebriated. Right. Not knowing, I guess, how much proof it was in it. Whatever they was doing. And of those eight, how many seemed to be potentially minors? Two to three, or possibly three. Two to three. Also on the flash drives, Courtney, um, was a what looked to be a manuscript written by, I, it appears to be a woman who had taken Kim Porter's private journals and had written a book. Is that accurate? We don't know. I don't, I don't, we don't know. know how, yeah. I don't know how, I, um, who wrote it, put it together, but it was from her when I spoke to um, her. Okay, so I'm kind of confused on this part. So he's basically saying that he received these flash drives and the flash drives that had the manuscript on it that was unedited. I'm guessing that's what he's saying, right? But he's saying he don't know who he got it from. I don't know. Maybe is that what he's saying? Is he saying he don't know where he got it from? I don't know. Keep going. What you received on the flash drives, was it the completed book or was it notes from Kim Porter that later were made into a book? It was completed. It's only okay. 60, only, the, only about 54 pages. Was sure, and in the beginning, it says, Kim made me promise that if something happened to her, I would make sure this book became public to the world. The way Sean moved, I knew that was a promise I would have to fulfill. Kim knew I was a woman of my word, and this book was going to make it to print. So it sounds like it is a woman who wrote... Um, up the notes from Kim Porter. Does that sound accurate? It's, it's how you read it, yes. I haven't even read the book. Do you know who the woman is? No. And and to be clear, he received it in its complete form. So I think just to make sure we have some clarity here, yeah. the manuscript that Mr. Burgess received was already in its complete form. Um, it's not did that he ate, uh, edited it or changed anything. Got it. Um, he did give it to someone Makes else who, who then edited it, but that's not how he received Our it. Wait a minute. Hold up. So let me get this right. You received a book from someone. You don't know who you received it from, right? Well, you don't know who wrote it. Maybe you're going to say who you received it from. But then you gave it to somebody to edit it? Who 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 edited the book? Or who edited whatever you're talking about? Okay, so Ariel, did um, did your client Courtney receive the book from the woman who seems to have written it, saying, "I'm a woman of my word, and this book is going to make it to print." I don't know if he received it from a man or a woman. He can answer. That. I received it from a man. I tell you, some somebody she was dating. Wait a minute, dog. Hold up. So, all right, so now we got four people involved in this now. Because when it first started out, y'all was saying that you don't know where you got it from. You just know you received it, but you don't know who you received it from. Then she asked your lawyer, did he, re did he receive this book from the woman who's in question? The woman that's at the top saying that she, uh, she had, to, had to put this out because she made a promise. And you saying... I don't know if he received it from a woman, a man or a woman. 
how you do not know if your client received a book that's saying Diddy did some nefarious things. That's your client. How you not know that? And then he re he reveals that it was from a man in front of you. This is what I mean. Like y'all have to pay attention to what these people be saying, because a lot of times they be making up stuff on the fly because they know that people ain't going to question this. It's your lawyer. How you how your lawyer not know who you got the book from you? She literally just admitted it right there, said, I don't know who he, where he got it from, who he got it from. So you're telling me that you didn't tell your lawyer that you got it from a man? Like, come on, bro. <laughs> Let me like, make sure I make sure this is right. So let's do that again. I'm a woman of my word, and this book is going to make it to print. I don't know if he received it from a man or a woman. He can answer that. I received it from a man. I tell you. I don't know if he received it from a man or a woman. He can answer that. You're his lawyer. What do you mean? You're supposed to know this stuff. <laughs> Some Somebody she was dating. Do you know if the notes from the book really some somebody she was dating? So wait, you received a book from somebody that the woman was dating. How did he get in contact with you? Like it has to be a, a connection. How did he get in contact with you? What did, what did, how did he know that? How did he know to reach out to you? And who are you? To hold on to these things. Like what, what, what significance do you have. That is of any importance. In this whole situation here. Maybe they'll explain. Do you know. If. The notes from the book. Really were from Kim Porter. It was yes. Because I spoke to her. Um, probably like. Six hours before I got it. Received it. You spoke so, to Kim Porter? Yes. So, Kim Porter. Just saying hi. Wait a minute, dog. <laughs> nah, dog. I'm not rolling with this story. I ain't rolling with this. So, let me get this right. You literally said earlier that you never spoke to her, right? You said you said that you don't know. You got the book in its form and you don't know. Well, at least at least you you made us believe that you never spoke to Kim Porter. As you made us believe that because you said there was no contact or whatever, right? Now the lady is asking you straight up, did you speak to her? And you said yes. But you still didn't answer the question. How do you how do you know that she was the one that wrote it? How do you know that? You never answered that question. You answered the fact that you spoke to her, but you didn't answer that. So maybe you're going to answer that. Let's go. Probably like six hours before i got it received it you spoke so, to kim porter yes so kim just porter. saying hi uh, okay just saying hi didn't okay I? ariel go ahead and give me clarity on the timeline no um, i'm trying to get uh, him ariel. to uh, provide clarity of uh was there a conversation with no her i was or talking just... to the person and he said hold up this is courtney be right here let me say something to him he said i know him put me on speaker then that's how we end up speaking and then later, then somebody later. brought some um, uh, somebody else came and brought you the the manuscript. Right, right. Before I left. Yeah, then, nah, nah. I don't. I'm not rolling with this story. I'm not rolling with this story. Now, it, uh, the other stuff could be real. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that the tapes, the flash drives, could be real. But that story right there, I don't believe that. I don't believe that part of the story. I believe that maybe he forgot. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he really didn't understand. What was asked of him i don't know maybe he's nervous i don't know but i t i'm telling you i do not believe that story because the lawyer the lawyer don't know certain things which she should know everything that's crazy for your lawyer not to know you on national television basically it, basically revealing things that your lawyer don't even know like come on bro you know what i'm saying and and she's still questioning you about it you know what I'm saying now, I don't know if this is your your direct lawyer. Maybe this is just a lawyer for you to come on TV. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But she representing you and you should have told her these things. I don't see how she could represent you. And I don't know. Maybe she's just a counsel. I don't know. But I am saying that she is representing you and she don't know.
And from what you're saying on here, I just don't believe your story. I don't believe his story. Before I left ATL. To the best of your knowledge, uh, Courtney, do you believe that the manuscript is truly based on Kim Porter's diaries? Because there is a lot of dialogue in there. It is pages and pages of actual dialogue, which, I mean, I can't remember breakfast today, let alone dialogue from 5, 10, 15, and 20 years ago. I guess this is a woman's scar. You understand? Maybe, you know, what she's been through is, you know, you. I'm not a woman, so I'm just going by how you, I got female friends and relatives. They always come to the house scorn because what went on in a relationship. And you can't, when you scorn, you can't forget it. Important to stop down here for a moment and note again that Sean Combs is accused. He has not been convicted of any crimes. And so far, everything against him is an allegation until it is proven in a court of law and a jury either decides or he um, decides to sign a plea deal uh, to any of these crimes. But at this point in the story, Sean Combs is uh, not guilty of any crimes. He is currently under indictment. He is currently being held on, um, on bail. But if you're at all curious about how Courtney Burgess feels about Diddy today, I asked him about that too. And here's what he had to say. Your lawyer just said, the story the tapes tell are the story of Diddy from the last uh, several decades. And I know that you've known Diddy for a very long time. Can you describe what that story is based on what you now know to be true, the last several decades of Diddy's behavior and the reason he's now sitting in lockup? I, I think I've been doing it for 35 years. I think we probably entered the music business at the same time. He entered with um, Uptown, I entered into Big Beat. Um, Atlantic. At the time, I guess he was ambitious. He was then from ambitious went to um, doing anything. Then from doing anything. Okay, so let me let me speak on this, um, and I want to say this because again, I question everything. Just because you know somebody for thirty five years doesn't mean you know them. Just because you was at work, you worked for, with somebody for 35 years, doesn't mean you know him. I worked with somebody for 20, 20 years I worked with this girl, and I never knew her husband name. Never knew her. Never knew her. Never even knew that she had two kids, and I worked with her for 22 years. And we worked in the same, the same vicinity together. Sometimes we watched the same patients together. Never knew. So just because you work with somebody, doesn't mean that you're friends because people at work and people at uh at home or people outside of work is not the same as you saying that your friends are not now again i'm not saying that him and diddy is not close but maybe he's going to explain what it is but i'm just putting that out there because i want y'all to i want y'all to understand don't just accept what these people say you know what i'm saying just because you feel a certain way i feel like diddy's a monster but i'm not just going to accept something you know what I'm saying? I got to understand because there's a lot of things that I feel, but doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually real. I could feel any type of way. I could feel somebody I don't even know Diddy, and I could feel like he a monster because of what he betrayed him out to be. You know what I'm saying? But, again, the evidence I've seen, he actually is. So it has to be some tangible evidence for me to see that. You know what I'm saying? And it's not just through, through, the, through the sexual stuff. I'm talking about how he did it on making the band, how he treated people and how he did people in record labels and record deals. I'm talking about that type of monster. Whatever he did sexually, I don't really know because I haven't seen anything. You know what I'm saying? But we're going to keep it going. Thing to, yes, he was ambitious. He was then from ambitious went to um, doing anything. Then from doing anything to... Um, didn't care about nobody, who he could beat, and then he ended up turning to Lucifer. And today, I'm looking at him. I don't. Even, I know y'all call him Diddy or Puff. Y'all call him Lucifer. Yeah, if y'all hear some talking in the background, that's my wife. She just got a big mouth, and I keep telling her, to, like, she just blah 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 blah. Anyway, so look, um, how do I feel about this whole thing? Now, again. 
this is all alleged. You know what I'm saying? I don't really know what's going on as far as uh certain things that Diddy is doing or whatever, whatever he did. I don't know. Um, I don't really believe everything that man is saying. Doesn't necessarily mean that he's lying about everything. He could be lying about certain things. I don't know. But I do know that some of the stuff that he was saying in front of his lawyer, I just don't see how he was revealing that in front of his lawyer. When he, she, when it's crucial things that he was saying that she should have known going into this interview. I just don't understand that. I don't understand how she could say, um, I'll let him answer that, whether it was a man or a woman who gave him the stuff. Like, that's what we're here for. We're here to figure out who gave you these manuscripts. And you're saying that it was a man. How did you get it? Did you get it through email? Did he drop it off? Like, what was it? I know, and some of these questions can just be answered. I don't think it has to be because you're telling that. And on top of that, you went on another show and you told about it. You said there was eight celebrities on this tape and three of them was boys or underage boys or whatever, right? So now that we know that, this is the question I have for the federal government who has these these things. Are we going to ever know who was that on that tape? You know what I'm saying? Are we going to ever know? And where, how did you get these flash drives? You said that this is my, this is the question I have. How did you get the flash drives? You said that somebody gave them to you, right? The guy, but how did he get them? Where did he get them from? How did he get these, these, these recordings? Did he get them from Diddy's house? Did he steal them? Like, what did he do? How did he get those recordings? And who was the guy that gave them to you? And you said it was a guy that was, that the person was dating. Was it the, was it Kim Porter? Because you said it was Kim Porter was on the phone. Was it Kim Porter? He She had the, the films and he gave them to the guy? Or was it the girl who wrote the book that you didn't even know who the girl was, wrote the book and gave it to the guy that you don't even know who the guy is that gave you the tapes? That's my question. Where did they get the tape from? How did they get the tapes? How did they obtain them? You know what I'm saying? I know a lot of y'all probably like, well, who cares? It, it, that's important because that lets you know that whether the story is true or not. Because the person saying they got the tapes from somebody, we need to understand where did they get them from, who they got them from, and how did they get them. You know what I'm saying? So, either way, man, that's the video. You have yourself a good day, man. Love y'all, man. See y'all. Peace. Bye.